In today's video, I'm going to show you how I hacked a brain scanner, built bespoke software for it, reprogrammed a custom macro keypad, designed and 3D printed an all-in-one portable console housing for it, complete with its own power supply and cyberpunk aesthetics, and show you a surprise function for it that I am utilizing and using every single day. But most importantly, I'll show you how you too can take on projects like this yourself and dream up your own wild ideas and bring them into reality. So, are you ready? Let's begin. Like most of my builds, this one started with a list. A great big fat list. This thing was my project bible. It enables me to create not just milestones in the project, but also constraints that ensure that I actually get the project over the line. One of my biggest challenges as a human being is working to fruition. I find it really hard to finish a project. I am constantly tweaking, constantly updating, constantly changing things. So I set the deadline to three weeks. Yes, the ticking crack. Now, I wasn't sure if a commercial headset would be hackable, but through a little Googling, I found that a device known as the Muse 2 did everything I wanted it to do, and it could potentially be hackable. But for a hefty price tag of £200 retail, I was off to eBay for the thrill of the hunt and to my luck managed to grab an absolute bargain for one. It arrived in a couple of days and I was really excited to try it out because the Muse 2 headset comes with its own set of Python libraries, making it perfect for custom software. And the brain tracking is pretty impressive as well. These electrode spots give unique insights into brain activity for meditation, focus, stress monitoring, and more. It's a super interesting device with tons of scope for project ideas. For the dedicated computer, I chose a Raspberry Pi 5 because Python works right out of the box. It's fast, small, and easy to power. And I already had one lying around doing absolutely nothing. So for portable power, I used an NEU power bank. If you're sourcing your own, just make sure that you are using any power bank that can supply at least 5 volts 3 amps, but preferably 5 volts 5 amps for full power usage and good battery run times on the Pi 5. For the display, I picked up this small Pi Hut touchscreen, 800 by 480 pixels that mounts right onto the Pi's pins, super compact with no extra cables. For input, I wanted a programmable keypad. I first bought a really cheap one that turned out to be Windows only and it was nothing but a big headache. I tried as hard as I could to get this thing working but after sinking endless nights learning loads about firmware, I gave up and managed to find this beautiful Adafruit macro keypad instead. Now this Adafruit macro keypad is awesome. It uses CircuitPython which is extremely beginner friendly and powerful. Now, I didn't even know what CircuitPython was until I bought this thing, so I was absolutely overjoyed to know that there was something new that I needed to learn. Programming it was easy thanks to ChatGPT. I can customize every key, knob, LED, and the monochrome OLED screen. I love this keypad. It is so flipping cool, and CircuitPython is a joy to work with. I really loved my time programming this. To check if the Muse 2 worked, I wrote a quick test program. Once I confirmed the Pi could capture data from my brain, I moved on to creating the front end. If you've seen my previous video where we programmed a quantum computer to calculate population changes in my cyberpunk stock market simulator, you'll know that I just love seeing my UI come alive as early as possible. It really helps to get me motivated. To build the images, I initially used Midjourney to create the background and the brain, and Photoshop to pixelate everything using a mosaic filter, and then to create the animation using simple layers that I would then save as an animated GIF with transparency. Over to the keypad, and I was able to map each button using an EEG channel and color the LEDs to align with the colors for each channel on the screen. I also set up the OLED display on the keypad so that when I press a key, it shows extra info about the brain region, TP9, AF7, etc, etc. This detail helps me keep track of what each electrode monitors, and it looks 
super cool. Then with the help of ChatGPT, I created a text file containing a list of brain facts surrounding the sections and waves of the brain I'm scanning, which then display as information on the app when we switch into each channel. Then I programmed the twisty knob on the Adafruit to zoom in and out on the data being read, allowing for a detailed view on each electrode as it was scanning my brain. After several days of staring at screens, it was time to start sketching up my ideas for the case. I wanted to house everything into a stylish, retrofuturistic cyberdeck. I love the cyber lines of the hand-drawn styles on the cyberpunk tabletop RPG and the deep textured greens of the Animatrix. I had an idea to kind of merge a white foundation base case with a black faceplate and green hex filled cyber lines. With my sketches, I headed over to YouTube to learn as much as I could about 3D designing for 3D printing and to see if my sketches could actually become a reality. I also bought this excellent book by my buddy, the retro collectivist Richard Horn, that talks about everything from print materials to heat beds and design hacks. It really helped me to get my head around what was possible for this case, but boy, was it some learning curve. For the 3D design software, I used Fusion 360, something I had zero experience in, but thanks to AI, it helped me figure things out. Literally, with ChatGPT open on the opposite side of my screen, I was able to talk to AI to tell it what I wanted to do and then get instant feedback on how to do it. It was mind blowing. Within a couple of days, I was sketching, extruding, cutting and modeling my own case. It felt like pure creation and I was loving it. But when it came to the 3D print part of the project, this was easily the hardest, most stressful time both in terms of getting things right and learning that even though it looks sexy on screen, you have to come up with some compromises. God, did I struggle. Man, I had warping, messy prints and constant bed edition issues. After a lot of late night tinkering and early morning reprinting, I finally managed to get there by designing the console into modules with a bottom and top case, a faceplate housing section, these cool as hell green cyberpunk shapes and a textured bottom to prevent the warping mid print. It's not perfect, even with digital calipers to the millimeter. I still had to resort to cutting sections of the internal design in order to fit cables. But finally, we got there. And I'd say that the look is definitely worth it. If you're new to 3D printing, don't worry. Just remember that you learn by doing. Always try to challenge yourself and don't be worried to make mistakes. Learn from them and tweak until it works. Three weeks ago, I would say that I knew absolutely nothing about 3D printing. And today, I can safely say I am definitely now a novice. Everything fitted nicely. The console is portable, it's sturdy, and most importantly, it works. At this stage, I was looking at the final console and thinking to myself, this is a little bit like a movie prop. A friend suggested using it to turn on a light bulb, which seemed easy enough with modern Bluetooth lighting but that still felt like a bit of a gimmick. I wanted something more practical, something that I could actually use. Now, I struggle with meditation. I find it really, really hard to relax, to stop thoughts from coming into my brain every three seconds. And the focus aspect of it is something that I find unbelievably impossible. But when I do manage to do it, the benefits are incredible. So I wondered, Potentially, could we gamify that? What if we could attach the scanner to the bulb in order to give me instant feedback while meditating? The bulb in my room would dim as I relaxed. If I got distracted, opened my eyes or stopped, the light would come back on, ending my session. This was the challenge, to keep the light off. So again, with the help of AI, I purchased this LifeFix light bulb and in my code added a feature that uses the brain's activity to dim or brighten the light bulb in real time. Here's how it works. The software looks at theta and delta waves coming in from the Muse 2. Now these are key frequencies for meditation or deep relaxation. It then calculates a score between one to 25 in order to control the bulb's brightness. If you're relaxed, it stays dim. If your mind races or eyes open, it brightens. So I went over to my lovely Adafruit keypad and I programmed this little button right here, which I'm calling the flow key, to connect the scanner to the light bulb. 
Then I ran into a series of paradoxes. Paradoxes? Paradoxi? Paradoxal? Paradoxals? I ain't got a clue. <laughs> Mornings were impossible. School runs, sunlight and coffee had my brain firing at full speed. I couldn't get the dimness score below 18, so all my tweaking, coding and testing had to happen at night. The catch? Coding woke me up, making it then harder to wind down. I just couldn't find the right possible areas to then meditate. Which is interesting because I can never find the right time to meditate. And this gave me a really good indication as to what I do during the day. How I find meditating kind of impossible because I just have this crazy lifestyle. So solving that first paradox was a really great step in going further with developing my brain health schedule. The second paradox, filming. Between camera angles, lighting, ISO levels, white balance, battery issues, and the light bulb refusing to connect, it was a nightmare. And when I finally got everything working, could I calm down enough to dim a light bulb? Nope. Eventually, the perfect moment did finally arrive. And in real time brain activity, I was able to dim the light as low as a score of 10 in some circumstances, six or seven when I wasn't filming. And through all of these tests, I absolutely, genuinely started to fall head over heels with this device. I'm already using this Cyberdeck every single day to monitor my meditation. It is improving my memory, it's improving my focus, and it's improving my sleep. I'm noticing it even now as I'm performing to camera. The clarity of mind that I've got right now is so on point. I hope to God it continues. I just need to keep using this thing. It's great. I'm so happy with it. And of course, I'm calling it the Neurophotonic R5 Flow Cyberdeck. The Neurophotonic R5 Flow Cyberdeck. Why not? Why, why not? Neuro for brain. Um, flow, because you press the flow key. R5, because it uses a Raspberry Pi 5. Cyberdeck, because it's a Cyberdeck. It's a real one. Yeah. For any of you looking to build a device like this, my simple advice to you is just start. Once you've begun a project, it is already half done. All you've got to do then is get yourself a really good list of all the things you need to do in order to get yourself over the line and start that list with a deadline. Always. It's vital. Without deadlines, you do not get yourself over the line. And the more you constrain yourself on a project, the more likely you are to actually see it into fruition. It's bizarre that it works like that, but it really honestly does. It certainly does with a brain like mine anyway. One that goes brrrr. You never know what something you have in your head might become in your hands. It's, look at this thing. Isn't it sick? It's just so cool. I'm trying to get it in focus, there we go. Isn't that so, it's so cool. Yeah, brain scanner. Thanks for watching. If you enjoyed this video, please give it a thumbs up and consider sharing it with other people that might be interested in this content. I'm growing a little bit, it's, we're getting there, but I think so long as people share what I'm trying to do, it's really, really great. I don't just do projects like this. I also do philosophical and societal deep dives, navigating the preludes of a cyberpunk tomorrow. My next video is all about one of the biggest hacking cyber attacks of all time. I'm really looking forward to that video dropping. I've been working on it for weeks alongside doing this and I'm really getting into it. It's gonna be super cool. So if you wanna learn about that, please stick around. Yeah, thank you very much. This has been such a great project. I don't know if you can tell, but I'm still buzzing from it. I just really hope that you've seen what I've done today and you're inspired to do it. Please, if you've got any questions about today's project or you wanna learn a little bit more about my process in getting things off the ground and getting things done, please leave me a comment. I will reply to you. I will be more than happy to help anyone get projects like this off the ground. I think it's so important for us. It's great for our minds. It's great for our hearts. So yes, please like and subscribe, tickle that bell button, and I'll see you next time. All right. Cheers. Thanks. Bye. Cool. I was so happy with that one. That was wicked. What a long time though. My God. Warning. Band location override. Talon series system compromised.